Uh, hey everybody, <laughs> what's up? I'm Rizzo. I'm a streamer for Moist Esports and an ex-pro player uh, from Rocket League. I used to play for G2 as well, but no longer doing that. Now I'm just streaming, content hey, creation, all that good stuff. Did you ever? Did you ever think you'd be introducing yourself like that? Like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm Rizzo from Moist Esports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Rocket League creator. <laughs> No, no, not a not a day in my life did I ever think I was actually gonna say moist esports as an org. Yeah, it, it's wild times for sure. Speaking of wild times, before we hop into a bit of a background and stuff, I want to say congratulations. Um, I, I believe a recent engagement. Am I getting that correct as well? Yeah, you are correct. Thank you very much. I mean, that's obviously a a pretty big uh, accomplishment for for especially gamers out there to to find the one like that. So <laughs> nothing but congratulations. What has that been like? Um, I mean, the, like, day-to-day -day is not much different, but, like, leading up to it, it was, like, nerve-wracking, I guess. Uh, it's, like, I mean, it's just such a big thing, right? Yeah. Actually, like, proposing to somebody, so that was, that was a really big deal, but, like, ob obviously the day-to-day -day is still normal, so that's cool. Yeah, speaking of day-to-day, -day, what's a, what's a day-to-day -day schedule for a good old Rizzy boy out there? <laughs> uh, day-to-day -day schedule is, like sit around for a bit, do a bit of nothing, pretend like I'm looking for content ideas uh, while just procrastinating and watching YouTube videos, and then basically starting my stream after that for a couple hours. Wow. Usually the, the rundown. That is intense, dude. That sounds so thorough. Thank you for explaining that for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but bouncing back in time, how I've been generally, generally doing these things as well, I kind of want to know a background of like when this all first started for you. So at, at what age did you first get into gaming? Oh man, uh, I was super young. I don't even know like exact age. Basically, it's ever since I could uh, have a memory, that was basically when I started gaming. I used to play like on the SNES because I think I think it was just because my dad had one. So I would just play like uh, Super Mario World and a bunch of the other games that you know he already had. And then eventually, it led to like a PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, and all that. So I would just say like ever since I was like five. Or years old or something. Yeah, and so at what point in time did Rocket League come into the picture? What I guess I should first ask: What, what was your first <clears> game <throat> where you took it pretty seriously and you realized, oh, like I'm I'm pretty freaking good at gaming? Um, I I don't think I ever had like a realization of like, oh, I'm really good at gaming or anything. But I used to grind the shit out of Modern Warfare too. <laughs> <laughs> like that was my first grind game. Yeah, I was like, I would play COD Four, but I actually used to go to a community center. And so they had, like, I would play basketball a bunch, and then when everybody was, like, chilling out, um, we would play Call of Duty 4, just, like, split screen, like, four-player split screen, and we would just do 2v2s. And so, like, I got super into COD from there, and then I eventually got uh, Modern Warfare 2, like, when it released. I was so hyped for it, because me and all my friends from the community center would play COD 4, so, you know, we had to get the new one. Yeah, dude, I feel like NW2, well, I didn't paint you as a, I don't know why, whenever I talk to Rocket League peeps, I'm like, oh, I don't paint you guys as Call of Duty people, but like, we all kind of grew up around the same, around the same age, around the same games, obviously NW2 was a great one, like, towards middle school, grade school, high school, no matter yeah. what age group you were, man, those are the freaking days, but so after Call of Duty, I mean, when does Rocket League finally come into the picture? Yeah, so Call of Duty is like my middle school, I guess, like Modern for 2, and like, after Modern Warfare 2, like, because, you know, COD's only last a year. So after Modern Warfare 2 was done, it was like, uh, I was like trying the, the other CODs. I think like Black Ops was next or something like that. Was it Black Ops after Modern Warfare 2? Dude, you're asking the wrong guy. They got thir they got 1,300 titles, you know? Okay, yeah. Well, anyway, one of the Call of Duties was next. And every Call of Duty I played afterwards, I didn't really like too much. And so I was just like basically watching YouTubers <laughs> at that point. Like I just kind of stopped game, but I would watch a YouTubers game. And then... um. I played Minecraft a lot. Minecraft was like how I got started into content creation because I started watching these YouTubers and I was like, I could do Minecraft videos, so I did. So like my eighth grade to like senior year basically was me doing Minecraft. And eventually, as I got older, it was like on and off. Um, and so after senior year, I had graduated. I was working. I worked for a bit at a, at a gym, actually, of all things. You, you don't expect it when you look at me, but... I work, yeah, I worked at a gym making minimum wage, and then I quit because I was told I was going to get a raise, and then they, they said, nobody's getting raises, so I quit. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm leaving. So I left, 
And then I just sat in my room for a couple months, and Rocket League <laughs> came out during that time. And I just, as soon as it came out, my Minecraft friends were like, you should try this game. Um, I was like, ah, I don't know. It doesn't seem that cool. Like, you know, I was asking all these questions. And I spent like, I had like 25 bucks in my PayPal, and I spent 20 of the dollars to buy Rocket League. It's so, like I basically spent the last of my money from my job <laughs> to buy Rocket League while living at my parents' house because my Minecraft friends convinced me to. And so that's how I got into Rocket League. Bro, have you ever thought about how freaking wild that is? Like, this motherfucker was in Call of Duty playing COD 4, MW2, whatever, uh, gets into <laughs> Minecraft, is, is working a gym job, doesn't get the raise he wants, he goes, I'm out of here. And then you spend the last year money because your Minecraft friends say buy Rocket League, and that spiraled into what you've done. Like, have you ever thought about how freaking insane what you just said was? Yes, 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 I have a few times. But <laughs> just uh, like, life makes no sense. It really doesn't. But I would, I would, uh, when I first bought Rocket League, I just played with them. And then, like, the first night I bought it, I bought it at like 2 a.m. or something. Um, and so I grinded to like 6 a.m. 6 7 a.m. or I have to live at my parents no job so I was just gaming till 6 a.m. went to sleep probably woke up at like 3 p.m. and then I woke up immediately and just started gaming and that was like the cycle is I just did that for like 12 I would just play Rocket League for like 12 14 hours every day for like or like a month or two and eventually you know it slowed down a little bit but um I had grinded so much that by the time RLCS even came around I was just like yeah I'll sign up for this and then we qualified <laughs> Dude. So I just kind of fell into the entire thing, which is crazy. I mean, so what was that also that transition like? I mean, were your parents concerned at all? Because I mean, it, look, oh. <laughs> have you thought about it from their perspective? Like, okay, you know, Dude. um, he quit his job at the gym because they didn't give him that that little raise. He then went on a Minecraft stint. He hasn't left his room in a while. He spent the rest of his PayPal money on this game, and we haven't seen him <laughs> since. Like, is there, are they worried during that time? Well, I, okay, so I was also a Minecraft content creator for a bit, but I would do YouTube videos. So, like, I also signed to, like, a scam MCN that took, like, all my money. So Dude, same, that was That was same. awesome. Yeah, classic, classic. <laughs> 2015 classic. Um, So I did that, and so, like, I had money from there or whatever. But, like, I had, a, like, a YouTube following from that. So I, I knew, like, content creation a bit. And so as I was playing Rocket League a bunch, eventually, like, one day I just started streaming. And I got, like, no viewers because I had Minecraft viewership. And so, like, I had, like, six viewers or whatever. And then eventually I just got, uh, I guess, more known in the Rocket League community just from the players and stuff and, you know, streamers, players, whatever. And then eventually, you know, if that happens, you start streaming, then people know your name. Um, and so that's how I kind of got started. So, like, I was streaming and I would have, like, 40 viewers or so. And there was a time... I'm but looping back to your question now. There was a time where... My mom was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, like I had to kind of explain it. Like I'm streaming and like, you know, I'm doing what I would do for Minecraft and stuff. And then she goes, hmm. Dylan. I'm like, what? She goes, you got to get a life. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, you had to tell me that. That's crazy. So that was basically like the initial thought process of uh my parents but eventually i had like told her i was like like give me like a couple months um and like if not like i'll go to school in december and i was gonna go to like community college basically and then she was like all right like that works for me and i was like cool and so i just kept streaming and i grinded a bunch and i, I streamed a bunch and i was like on the path to partner streaming like the 4 a.m shift because that's when i got the most viewers and then eventually I got partner, and that was when I was like, all right, mom, I don't need to go to school. That's, <laughs> I'm pursuing this. That's just the, the stuff you never expect. You know, the, the person who gave you life also says, hey, you got to get a life. And you're like, <laughs> this is just twisted in all, all different kinds of ways. Um, it really is. It, it seems like you've always had that kind of, you know, that background or that, that side notion of like, hey, like I want to produce content. And then you kind of stumbled across a pro career. And I feel like that's something you've kind of carried on with yourself up until now. Is that the case? Yeah. Um, I actually had a conversation with James Bot, who's a caster for RLCS. And he said, uh, he was just like, one of the most interesting like stories to me of like, like a pro career is Rizzo's because he never really even wanted to be a pro. He just kind of stumbled into it. He was just a content creator and then he was just kind of there. And so he kept doing it, which is true. I just... Like, I, I qualified initially, and then, like, the seasons progressed, and, like, obviously, you know, as a younger kid, I'm 20, 25 now, I'm still young, but, like, 
you know, being 19, 20 and like seeing the seasons progress and you're like, oh, there's actually a lot of money in this. I'm going to stay around because like it doesn't make sense to just leave. That was basically how it was. It's just like they kept progressing. I was like, they, it doesn't seem logical to quit. So I'm going to keep playing. Yeah, it, it, I always compare those things like actual traditional sports. You know, it's not like an athlete just like stumbles across. I mean, you have gifted kids, right? But you don't right. just stumble across a football field and be like, yo, I'm going to join the NFL, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like, but you're making videos, you're streaming, and then all of a sudden, like, you're spending so much time playing a game, and you're like, oh, I guess I'll sign up for the L RLCS, you know? It's like, there's no comparison. So it's got to be weird to kind of fall on that path. And obviously, it led to a, a great, successful career. During your time as a Rocket League pro, what were some of the, the best moments, and what were some of the maybe not so great moments? Um, the, okay, the best moment easily was, uh, winning E-League in 2017, like winning any tournament is probably the peak, right? Especially like a, I mean, a, a bigger one. Like I, I've won also like a 2v2 dream hack for like 500 bucks. That didn't feel as good as like winning the E-League event. Cause like that was, that was obviously like the biggest event at the time. Well, not the biggest event at the time, but a very big event at the time. Um, and so that felt really good. So that's definitely like the top of it. That's definitely the peak. And then um, low points was probably like nearly getting relegated in RLRS, which was season eight. So season seven, we actually got second place in Worlds. And then season eight, we came back and nearly got relegated. So it was like, huh, how'd that happen? So that was pretty rough just being in that position. But actually, it was, it was weird because it was rough, but it was also like a pretty good motivator at the same time. And then um, I, I didn't have like a personal situation with this. I did really early on, but it wasn't that big of a deal as being teamless, especially in rock. I don't know if it's different for other esports, but like not knowing if you have a spot on a roster, not knowing if you have a salary, especially early on when like I was talking about, like the, the money wasn't crazy and I was just like streaming and, and all that. So like you kind of really wanted a spot. You're like, I don't know. You're like in this middle ground of, do I have a spot? Like, if I go back, do I even have it? And that's definitely a rough spot to be in as well. So that would probably be, like, some of the worst situations. Yeah, and you had, like, I mean, genuinely, you had, a, obviously, not many people can make it to, to where you made it and had a pretty generally successful Rocket League career. What was that all like? Like, looking back on it now, like, do you, do you miss certain moments? Are you glad where you landed? Like, what is that all like? <laughs> I am I am so happy about where I landed. It is like I don't think anything could have really gone better. Um like literally everything like even down to my last tournament of when I actually played I think was like perfect timing because that last tournament was also basically my breaking point. And I was like I am done with this. Like I you guys, you know, I I worded it a lot better, but you guys need to find a replacement like I will play if you can't, but like you guys should really try because you know the motivation isn't there and you're better off with somebody who actually has it. That sort of thing. But um I mean looking back on everything, it was it was all worth it. I'm happy where I landed and couldn't be couldn't be happier really. And when it came to it like a daily life of what people can expect from a pro player, and you're also making content on the side, maybe like a bit more in detail than what you gave me earlier. But like when it came to like your daily schedule of when you were actually, you know, head on with like G two, right? What was a daily schedule like then? Uh, starts off with a fucked up sleep schedule. Uh, waking up, or sorry, going to bed at 4 a.m. Somewhere around there. Uh, just because that's just the gamer way. Um, actually, I had a really consistent schedule, which was crazy. I would uh, wake up around noon or 1, stream for about 4 hours until scrim started. Then I would scrim for 2 or 3 hours. Sometimes there's a break, so it's a 4 hour period. So like... That would probably take up like eight, nine hours of the day sometimes. And then I would also, if I had time, I would record a YouTube video. Then I would uh, FaceTime Athena because we were doing long distance. And then as when she fell asleep, I would hang up and then go play, go upstairs and play Tarkov. <laughs> and, that was, and that's also why I went to bed at 4 a.m. But that was the day to day. So it was like eight, nine hours of like Rocket League stuff, really. Dang. Okay. So definitely a full schedule. And then, I mean, uh, also... What's it like to, to leave a roster and then, I mean, I feel like you got some genuine love for those guys and, and G2 as an organization and then to get to see them win as well. Like, is that a kind of a nice feeling as well to see those couple old guys in an old organization see success even though you're no longer there? 
Oh yeah, I mean with uh, with Chicago, I think I was teammates with them for like two, maybe two and a half years, and JNAPS, it was like it was like over four years. So like, I mean, most of my career was with JNAPS, like eighty uh, percent of it or something like that. So like, I, I've known that guy basically my entire Rocket League existence. I mean, even before we're actually on a team, like I played with them and stuff. So, um. I'm just I was so so happy for them like being in LA watching them win the major because I was on the sidelines with some of the casters because I was doing the award ceremony so I had to be ready to give the medals um and also that that was another reason why I was really hoping that they won because it would be a little weird because I was doing it no matter what so if they didn't win and I went <laughs> off and gave the medals to uh Queso at the time it would have been a little little weird but um but yeah super happy for them and like I mean, I couldn't be happier for where, uh, from where they ended up as well because I felt like, uh, like I said, I had no motivation for pro play. And so um, when I quit, I was hoping that they would be better off as well. So seeing them succeed without me is like a really good feeling. And I guess you could probably speak to as well. What, what is one of the tougher parts of being in that kind of atmosphere? A atmosphere and, you know... You know, you're trying to make content. You're trying to have a career as a pro player. Mm -hmm. You're balancing a lot of things. You know, you're FaceTime in Athena, you know, a future, the future one trying to balance a relationship and, <laughs> and weigh all these things in life. What's the most trying part of being a Rocket League professional whilst also trying to maintain everything else in life? Um, I think it's just because you have so many expectations on you from so many people, especially uh, like us on G2, like at the time we had, I would say probably like the biggest fan base. Energy was up there for sure as well. Or energy probably had us beat actually now that I think about it. But <laughs> energy had, for like a majority of my career, energy did not have like a higher fan base. Um, but eventually they, they did. Uh, so like having that expectation from fans, you have expectations from yourself. You know, they don't say it, but you know, you have expectations from like your family and stuff and you want to make them proud and all that. And, Expectation from everybody, your org, your org as well. And so when you don't perform, it feels really bad. Uh, so that's like, I think the biggest thing is a lot of them are very hard on themselves. And I wish that like they can think about it logically because some don't. And like if you, if you watch a player sometimes after they lose a tournament, they don't say like, oh, I played bad or um we didn't do this right or whatever. They just say, like, I suck. Like, it's a personal attack. So it's, like, a really big mental thing for them. And I feel bad every time I see something like that. Yeah, 100%. It's definitely not an easy thing to, you know, try and to get through. And I think people take from that advice, though, and heed from it. Uh, I won't keep it much longer, but, of course, we got to freaking talk about this. My man, you know, whew, no longer a pro, but, man, a content creator he is. You found... <laughs> You found one of the most interesting talking points, not just in Rock League, but I think across esports and what could play a future part. How the frick did you come across Moist Esports and Moist Critical? <laughs> Tell me the story. Like, I think one of the perfect landing points. Give me the background. Let's go. Okay. Uh, this is actually a, probably a little bit like, uh, what's the word? Like, it's not super normal, I guess. It is definitely a better word, but I don't know it. I'm not that smart. I played Rocket League after all, so um, it wasn't really like a normal situation. So when I retired or when I even before I talked about retiring and I had talked to like G2 and stuff and they were like, um, you know, we'll we'll give you an offer that like, you know, it, it's it's great and all that stuff for content creation. And they obviously had something else in mind and like other orgs as well like i had interest from other orgs like yeah like we'll get you a great offer silence it's nothing you know it's just like a bunch of orgs will you know they might say something and then when the time comes to it or whatever they won't give you an offer or they ghost you or whatever it happens which is understandable um business at the end of the day but like so i was sitting there and i was just like man like this is kind of rough because obviously as a pro like a large part of your payment is your salary and so like going from having a salary to nothing you know, you're like, man, I kind of really need an org. So I ended up tweeting out. I was like, which org should I join? <laughs> Hoping that like people would like tag orgs and an org would see it because I was getting nothing. Um, and then Charlie responded to that and said, Moist Esports is the only option or something like that. And so instantly I'd already followed him, I'm pretty sure. Uh, or maybe I followed him then. I can't remember. 
but we followed each other and we instantly just started DMing. And I don't know, we just talked a little bit more and I was like, this is actually like a serious thing. I've realized like I didn't know much about Moist Esports, but as I was talking to them and like the rest of the team, I realized it was actually serious and like what they want to do and how they want to implement Rocket League and all that. And I was like, this is legit. Like, I'll, I'll do it. Like, I'm down to work with you guys on everything. And, and I got to ask, interacting with Charlie, for those who don't know, Moist Critical himself, I, I would say a unique piece in the space of esports. Like, you don't, you don't often come across these kind of, you know, creators who are of his, of his size and his influence. What have those interactions been like? And, you know, obviously DMing it back and forth, a guy like that who wants to sign you, what's that like? Um, they, in general, they're like, when I say they, it's like a, a main team of like three people. It's uh, Charlie, Danny, and Matt. And so like talking to them, they're all like the same person. <laughs> they're all just like super laid back, super chill. And like, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's really, and, and Charlie's really, like, no different than what you see on stream and, like, uh, in, in his videos and stuff. And it's all just super laid back. It's, it's really cool. It's just, it's so weird for me, the dynamic of, like, someone you might have watched in terms of content creation, then reaching out and saying, hey, do you want to join my esports team, you know? Yeah, the weirdest thing is with Charlie as well, and I, I hadn't watched him, like, recently. I actually do watch his videos more now than before he signed me. Maybe that's a little biased there, but, um... I watched him when I was, like, incredibly young, like, 10 years ago, probably. And I remember showing him to, like, one of my, like, IRL best friends. Like, look at this guy. Like, this guy is hilarious. And Charlie was just talking about, like, oh, yeah, like, breastfeed me my nipples or, you know, whatever he's saying in his video. Like, this, I, I remember it so vividly, but it's, it's such a weird situation. And it's just like, hey, yeah, join my esports org. I was like, all right, sure. <laughs> so, so when it comes to the future, you know, Moist Esports has a presence now. When it comes to your own personal future, though, um, what, what do you see yourself doing uh, in terms of content streaming? Like, what do you think the future plans are going to be for good old Rizzo? Uh, I've been having a lot of fun just like hosting events. I've been doing, um, basically like show matches, uh, on stream and I want to host something a little bit bigger. So that's something that I have, that I've been planning, uh, for now, but in the future, yeah, I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I mean, Rocket League right now is the home, but that's not a. Uh, that's not the limit, I guess. I I would like to do some IRL stuff and, you know, make a bunch of creative content in general, not just Rocket League stuff. Heck yeah! Well, I'm not gonna keep you any longer. I appreciate your time, good old Rizzy boy. Uh, any last words? It's all on you. Uh, no last words, really. Just thanks for the interview, bro. I hope you have a hope you have a good night. Thank you, man. You too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good close there. Good close there.